Good morning. Welcome Good morning. to Wiggins School. I'm happy to have you guys here. Thank you to my parents for coming out, my fellow FOCs. Um, I'm grateful to have you guys here at our DPAC meeting at Wiggins. You're more than welcome to come back whenever you want. Um, we have a lot of new things going on at Wiggins School. You can come in here. We have an open door policy. Um, anything you need, I'm Ms. Carrero, the Family Operations Coordinator. And I'm going to introduce Mr. Barfield from the DPAC. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy New Year's. And um, it's good to see everyone here um, in this new year. This is our first DPAC meeting of this new school year. So um, today we have um, a technology department coming to do an update on our um, district um, instructional programs. Um, Normally, we would have our opening from our chairperson of um, parental involvement, Ms. Wilson, but she um, has a meeting. Um, our first vice president, she's under the weather. So as the secretary, I'm the next person in line to facilitate the meeting. So today, I will be facilitating the meeting. And um, again, we just like to thank everyone for coming out to the meeting. And as last month, if you was here last month, we got more of a... Um, update on the technology that we do have in the district which is great so now we're following up with actual the programs that the district is using that our children and our parents can have access to so without in, any uh, further uh, we're going to bring up miss tanya wilson from our technology department to do her presentation All right, good morning, and thank you, Mr. Barfield. Good morning. So as Mr. Barfield um, introduced me, I am Tanya Wilson, and I actually work with the Office of School Support. Uh, formerly, I worked in the Office of Technology, but now I actually live with our curriculum and instruction team, which is a good thing, okay? Um, a little bit about myself, I've been in the district for over 20 years. Um, have functioned in different capacities, um, always had a love for technology, excited about it to see students, teachers, and our school leaders be able to utilize it, okay? Uh, today what I'd like to do is to share with you a couple of updates on things that are going on now with the technology, and then from that point I will share with you some resources that you can utilize with your students, or I should say your children and students, um, moving forward, okay, that are uh, resources because they are students in Kansas City, okay? So a little bit more about my role. My, uh, my title is Senior Director of Special Content Area Support. So this year I took on a new role. Previously I was all instructional technology. This year besides instructional technology, I actually am working with our phys ed teachers, our art teachers, and our music teachers and computer teachers, okay? So my umbrella has really expanded, okay? It, it's great for me because um, I kind of see um, technology definitely in a different lens as far as assisting all of those teachers with infusing it, but then also, too, to uh, really take a look at the different arts and how our kids are supported outside of our core, um, you know, our core subjects, okay? Uh, one other thing I'd like to share with you in this position, um, it took a little time, but we have at every building what's called a ed tech liaison, okay? And so an ed tech liaison is a person who would be a uh, possibly a computer teacher and or a classroom teacher, and they turnkey technology training in the buildings, okay? It could be offered, at, it should be offered at least once a month, and it's to instructional staff. And so for our FOCs, if you're in a building, um, please touch base. You probably would want to go to your computer teachers first. <coughs> for the most part, it's a computer teacher. In some instances, you might have a classroom teacher that would hold that role. So it's somebody who's a bit tech savvy, and not on the end of fixing, but more or less on instructing. So how do I use these tools in the classroom? Because my role is more or less, how do I use the technology in the classroom to assist kids with making 
their jobs and tasks easier as they're learning, but then also too to you know delve in uh, as far as inquiry is concerned and being able to gauge their creativity, innovation, and so forth. Okay, so there's one uh, the turnkey training, and um, I'll give you an example. Some of the trainings that they might do might be on. Um, Microsoft um, email, it could be on um, new resources that we have in the district and so forth, okay? Um, every building in the district, in the family schools also have computer teachers, okay? So every building either has a lab or a mobile lab. For most part, all of our computer teachers are in labs and they actually um, instruct in our K through eight buildings as well. And then um, last but not least on, on this slide I'd like to share too is that I feel as though in the last couple of years we, because of this position and instructional technology living with our senior leads that are over science and math and literacy or whatever, we've had a greater collaboration on what technology looks like. Sometimes people feel as though technology is something extra that they have to do. And in a classroom setting um, and with teachers, we want to make sure there's nothing extra. It's something that's easy because we want to be able to teach our kids to be prepared for the world after high school and when they go away to college and they're leaving your homes and they're in the real world and how do they use their technology and how do they use it responsibly? That's always important. Um, some other things that I'd like to share is that we recently have, have been, oh, we've started updating our technology curriculum. Sometimes curriculums are like living documents. They go on and on and on. New things come along. I think one of the biggest trends that you've probably heard a lot about is coding. There's a lot of talk about coding and what goes on with coding. And if there's nothing else that you could probably get your kids involved with, get them involved and just introduce them to coding. It is something right now that's big. Um, it's, it, it, there's a need in every industry, it seems like, for the coding. And um, a lot of times, unfortunately, there's not enough of coders. And what happens is they don't have to go to school. They learn a language. Companies will hire them. And they're walking indoors with no degrees, making six-digit you know, uh, you know, uh, um, salaries. So just share with them. Each, uh, every year, in December, we had an hour of code. And we wanted every kid to be able to just experience that. And then we'll have it again um, sometime in February, <coughs> uh, another exposure to that besides the STEM fair. But please, encourage your kids to just take a look at that. There's a lot going on. Um, with the coding, I want to add that um, at the end of every month, we're going to be having a, a big initiative that will be drop <coughs> everything and coop in the computer labs, okay? So you should hear a lot more about the coding. Uh, what's interesting is sometimes people look at the students as they're engaging with this and thinking, oh, they're playing. But they're not playing, but when you actually watch and see uh, little people that have to write directions at the kindergarten level, or at the third grade level, or even at the high school level, on how to get an application or something or a system to do something, it is like so important. And it also, too, to actually watch them begin to think and then question themselves and go back. And that's what we want. We want kids to be able to be thinkers or problem solvers and whatever. And if it's not working this time, you shouldn't have to be able to tell them. Don't tell them. Let them figure it out. Because when they get out there in the real world, they're going to have to figure it out one way or the other You know, when they become adults. So the coding is something um, that we are definitely emphasizing. You'll hear about it not only in our district, but just across the nation. And in New Jersey, um, they just put out a fact sheet. And the fact sheet was just sharing a lot of information about you know, coding and exposure and you know, how much is are actually in our schools. But the one big thing I also want to share is that they're looking for females. They are looking for female coders, okay, to get into that world. So if you have young ladies, I'm not being biased against the guys, but if you have those ladies, there's a lot of guys in the field, but we don't have enough females in the field, okay? Each year in the 11th grade, Microsoft offers a, um, a institute where they invite girls in the 11th grade to apply and to go to several different areas. It's like at least four locations in the world, I mean, in um, the United States, in which they can take advantage of um, 
learning coding and all of that, you know, in a two week span where it's completely paid for, okay? And um, it's unfortunate, we haven't had anybody apply yet, but I'll be pushing it back out again this year. So if girls want to take advantage of that, I definitely would encourage you. If you know somebody in the neighborhood, anytime I see opportunities like that, if I know somebody in the neighborhood, a friend or whatever the case is, please share with them, okay? Now, if you have any questions while I'm going through this, please stop, raise your hand. Um, what are the ages for the, the girls you're looking for? It will be 11th grade. Okay. So it's girls that's in 11th grade, okay? Um, all right, in the spring, I have, yes. I have a question. I know um, I've seen um, when they had the, the, um, the coding day at, up at Rutgers, you had a group of students, was it? Yes. That was attended? Like how was that, that team compiled? Like Selected. You know, selected and, you know. So uh, Mr. Barford is sharing that Camden Hope Works, each year in the fall and the spring, they have what's called a hackathon. This is Camden Hacks, okay? And they invite everyone out. They give slots or whatever. And so I push it out to schools, mm -hmm. and I definitely push it out depending on the age group. And um, they actually, this time around, were accepting students from middle school through 12th grade, okay? Mm -hmm. So sharing with the buildings, um, computer teachers, mm -hmm. anybody who teaches Cisco or whatever, and ask them and recommend to have their students be able to attend this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you'll get a lot, but at the beginning of the year, it's kind of like, you know, a give or take or whatever. But um, we've had, th the first year when they actually had it, we had, I think about 15 to maybe 20 students that attended. Mm -hmm. And out of the 15 to 22 students that attended, along with other um, students in the city, and then they opened it up also to outside, um, they engage, they work with a lot of experts from Microsoft, Dell, and a lot of other companies, Cisco. And then um, two of our students at that uh, time actually won computers that day. So they actually won two computers uh, for coming out, uh, just in the drawing room, whatever, we were very excited. Those were actually interns from Kim, um, Big Picture. Okay. Yeah. So we will be putting it out again in the spring if we get the invitation. And um, just keep your ears and eyes open for that. And we'll also share with the FOCs, just in case you want to share with your parents. Okay. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, in, uh, because I work in the office, with all of our senior leads in the different content areas. We've been collaborating. One of the things that we're really trying to put together right now, we're in a, um, conversations right now, is having a spring, uh, a spring STEM fair, okay? And STEM, for many of you, um, I just wanted to share, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering. We will also in include art and mathematics in that. Okay. So we're in conversations about that. We're excited about it. Um, I have two colleagues, Jeanette Williams and then Price Jones. They're very excited and bubbly, and so um, we will be, you'll hear more about that. Okay. During the summer, this summer, we offered a lot of teacher um, training. And so another update I wanted to share is, because we're in Microsoft District, uh, sometimes we have different resources that are afforded to us. So we had a chance to have uh, offer training for our teachers and to have teachers if they wanted to come out to be certified. So I opened it up not only to our computer teachers, but any teacher in the district that would like to take advantage of that. It was uh, three days that it was offered, they came out, and we had 18 teachers that were certified to be Microsoft Innovative Educators. So I think that, that you know, that, that, that's exciting to know and to see them be able to go through that. It's a bit intense in being able to learn that information, so I wanted to share that with you. Um, and then one other thing I'd like to share is, is that this year, and even last year, was really introduced and it was a change because we had so much change last year with the introduction of um, new curriculums in different areas. But we um, introduced a lot of online um, applications or resources for our students that would support the uh, different areas. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but our kids are like, you know, they have really been um, introduced to a lot of online learning, you know, besides the classroom, which is like a blended approach to a certain degree, but it's exciting to see kids be, you know, engaged, you know, on, to online resources too. Okay. So, if you can recall, I mentioned that in every building we have, oh, I'm sorry, yes. I'm sorry, I have a question. I have a son that's here. Mm -hmm. Yes. He'll be a senior in September. Mm -hmm. He actually has a computer technology class, so with this core, 
clause that you're talking, referring to, was this, does he have some of these codes in that technology class? It depends on the title of the class. Do you know the exact, exact title? Because some classes at, like Woodrow Wilson, I know they offer CAD. Mm -hmm. They also offer, um, I believe, an um, entrepreneur class, okay. which is part of our CTE um, mm -hmm. programming. So it will pro I will probably have to know a little bit more about what the title of the course is. But at Woodrow Wilson, they did engage with um, the Hour of Code. So they did, and it was just remarkable to see during that time frame when they were engaged, all of the teachers just like flooding my mailbox and you know my feeds with um, the engagement and how kids were so excited at the high school level okay. with that. But uh, um, we can talk later and we, I'll find out for you. Okay. okay? Right, right, Thank right. you for asking. All right, so I shared earlier that we have computer teachers in the buildings at the K through eight um, level. And, uh, and K through eight is like we, expose students to several different areas of technology, okay? And then when they move on to high school, then they decide on what track they want to take and um, what they want to, uh, you know, if they, what they're going to study so they could go into CTE or a college prep or so forth, but just to share that. And so in while they're in K through 8, they are exposed to technology operation concepts, which are kind of like, um, how do I use Microsoft? How do I um, use email? Um, how do I create or you know create a Word document, um, PowerPoint, those types of things? Okay. Then they're moving into digital citizenship, and that's the one thing that they are um, that they work on immediately coming in at the beginning of the year. Because digital citizenship, we start at the beginning, and then throughout the course of the year, you're <coughs> continuously teaching kids how to become how to be responsible citizens and users on the internet. It's a crazy world, as you all know out there. I have to continuously teach. And you know, um, it sometimes can be a um, teachable moment in certain situations. But we want to make sure that um, they know how to function on our network. And also, too, when they get home on your network or anywhere when they're out in the world, OK? Uh, we see a lot of bullying. Um, we, we're always concerned about cyber safety. So those are some of the things that are taught in the um, computer labs. Research and information fluency, that's like research skills, you know, um, as far as uh, researching different things. Communication and collaboration, that is so important. Being able to collaborate and for them to learn how do I collaborate um, in the social media, with social media, um, video conferencing and those types of things. So they do have exposure to that as well as um, critical thinking and then of course bringing it all together, all those skills with um, how do you use these tools as you work with like projects that involve STEM, okay, or STEAM. I want to move now in, any questions so far? I want to move now into what are we doing in the district as far as supporting our English language and um, math as far as the growth is concerned. Okay, so um, <clears throat> for our K through eight students at every building, students use a system called iReady. Okay, I'm sure if you ever heard of iReady, it's something wrong. <laughs> Ask your kids about iReady. And then um, in K for K through five, they use it also too for mathematics. Okay, and I ready is a system in which they diagnose each student, and after diagnosing, to see, hey, at the beginning of the year, uh, Mr. Barfield he comes in and he might be at third grade, and we diagnose him to see um, what skills does he need to get him up to par. Okay, and then uh, it will assign those skills, and throughout the course of the year, uh, through different lessons. Uh, He's given the lessons. He takes advantage of um, the rotations in the classroom. So every classroom has computer, um, either at least four computers, or they may have access to the mobile labs. The mobile lab is when they push a card in there, everybody has access, or maybe they just have four laptops that come into the room, OK? And so they are able to engage. 45 minutes per week, we try to get students on for math and for literacy. Sometimes we get it depending on you know the week, and sometimes we don't. We definitely encourage them to access it from home. Okay, they can access from from home. I was talking to a couple of students over the break uh, that I had seen out, um, 
And so they were sharing that they had to do their I Ready homework. And as I stopped right in my tracks. I said, what's your I Ready homework? And so then they shared that they had to be on for 45 minutes, um, you know, at home while they were out for the break. And I was just like, yes, to see students, you know, wanting to take advantage of that, okay? Especially something, something that deals with technology that's academics as opposed to play, okay? Um, so I Ready is something, and they access that through Clever, and I'll share with you in a minute. And then as far as additional resources, one other system for math for our middle school population would be Think Through Math. So middle school and high school, they use something called Think Through Math. Think Through Math is kind of equivalent to iReady, in which it diagnoses them, and then after it assesses them on where they're at, then they will, it will continuously um, give them formative assessments as they go through the lessons. And the funny thing is, as the kids are interacting with these um, systems, they're getting skills, but then they also have time to play. And so they can't really distinguish the two because the way that they've designed them, it's like academics and they get a little play or whatever the kids, and it's just funny just watching them. Quite often, I'll, uh, as I'm visiting buildings, I just sit and I watch to see how the kids are engaged with that, okay? At our high school, Woodrow Wilson and Camden High, for certain students, we have a system that's called RE180, okay? And RE180 is a, a, a program in which for kids that are not at their level, it, they continuously work with them, so they're coming into the classroom, they have whole group instruction with the teacher, and then at certain um, time frames when they break up, they're working with a teacher, some are working on their own, and then some are working on the computers on Read 180, engaging and getting them where they need to be, and they're working on their independent reading levels, okay? They're also working on on-level uh, reading as well. Independent means where I'm at right now, on levels where I should be at, okay? And then continuously, every single day, teachers can monitor their progress, okay? To see, you know, what's going on. So that's in ninth and 10th grade. All right. All right, so I wanna share with you Clever. And the reason why, I just wanna share with you and let you see what I already looks like, okay? Just so you'll see. So in our district, and I don't want to confuse you, but Clever is, how should I say this? Clever, Clever is a portal, okay? And a portal means that all of the applications or the softwares that we use, we can actually put in Clever, okay? You've probably heard of some people have, and if you've watched your kids go to iReady. But in order to get to iReady, we have the kids go through Clever. And the reason why is this. It's one single sign on, meaning if I have think through math, if I have I ready, if I have this and I have that, there's a, it's a lot of log ons for kids to have to remember. So using Clever is a good way also too because sometimes we have students that are very transient. They're moving from building to building. So it makes it easier if I leave here and I have to go over to H.P. Wilson, then I have the same log on here or if I go to H.P. Wilson, okay? And so that's easier. So an easy way for you to all remember for Clever the username for Clever is the student ID. Every child by now, or most kids know it, except for maybe kindergarten, first grade, or whatever. But for the most part, most students know their student ID. And the password is just their date of birth. It's their date of birth. Meaning if I'm built, born in February, it's going to be uh, 2. If I'm born on the 11th, 11, 2 slash 11 slash, and then four, four digits for the um, the year, okay, is, yes. Is that set up by default for all the students in the district? This is, yes, because I set it up. <laughs> yeah, so it's set up for all schools in the district, and depending on what applications are used at different schools or what applications are used at different levels, so meaning middle school or high school, then they're able to use it. We are able to use it. Some people, depending on the setup, decide that they may not want to use it for different reasons, but it's here and it, it, it's great if it's used that way. Question. Renaissance schools, are, do they have that? Which one? Renaissance. Not to my knowledge, I, I don't know. Yeah. I know all the public schools do right now, okay? All right, so I'm gonna log in.
Okay, I'm just gonna. Excuse me, one second. She's next. So, okay, so the kids go in, and what's nice also is if students did not, if they had a laptop, they had these cool things that are called badges. So for the little people like Kay in first grade, if they can't remember right now their student IDs, they able, they're able to go up and with the camera scan their badge and it'll automatically log them in. So some schools have set that up. For instance, ECDC, my EdTech liaison, which is a computer teacher, set it up so all the little people, if they have access to a camera, can go up, scan their badge, and it logs them right in. Okay? All right, so when the kids go in, any resource that I've set up and or if a school requests for um, me to put in, I can put there right now for this student, which is a first grade student. Um, she has iReadyLearning.com and then two also, also Office 365. Hello. So when I go over and I just click one time on iReady, automatically takes me in. There's two subjects here, like we said, they want kids to be 45 minutes on one, uh, both of these. And so depending on if we're in literacy time and they're rotating, then when the kids go over to the computers, they will be working on the reading or math uh, for math during math instruction. They go in, there's um, coins that they earn for different interactions. They have instruction, uh, instruction, they have a practice area, and then they also have a quiz. The quizzes are not like set up like test mode. It's all like a game in which they're interacting. And what's nice is they give them their instruction for learning it, they give them practice. And if kids kind of like have problems and they're really not getting it after I think the second attempt, then it kind of like locks them out of that skill and just moves them on to another. A teacher's notified, and then that's when a teacher can pull them over to small group to be able to reinforce whatever's going on, okay, at their level in small groups, okay? Question. Question. So um, with this one here and the one that you spoke about um, before this um, slide, with the read 180, are they the ones that um, the parents or students have access at home to, or is this This one is definitely at home. Read 180 is definitely at home. Think Through Math is at home. Read 180 is for literacy and math. I'm sorry. I Ready is for literacy and math. The Think Through Math is just, of course, math. Okay. Read 180. I have to check on that to see if it's accessible at home. It probably is. But I know that some of our, how should I say this? Some of our servers that set up for certain programs are on site. And some of the programs are out online on the web so you can access them anywhere okay but i can find out information out for you okay thank you yes um with these programs um let's say that there's a child that don't understand like you said and it gets kicked off and then it goes back to and then there's a flag for the teacher and that's how you guys could determine if this child needs help somewhere along the line yes so there's help, um, it does a great job of tiering kids. So say for instance, everybody's in here, and maybe some people know the four corners and the f uh, uh, four sides, but others don't. So maybe we have four here that may not. I, as a teacher, I go and I look at the dashboard and I can see it and then I can say, hey, you all, we're gonna do our smart group here. You two work on this, you go over there to the computer, we're gonna work on this and get you where you're gonna be at. Mm -hmm. And also too, there's a lot of professional development that teachers get ongoing with the next, they're actually in the district today. Yes. Is that also beneficial to children that have an IEP, 501 plan? Yes. Special services? Yes. Okay. Yes, because it's at their level. Okay. Yes. Because I have a lot of parents that access. Yeah. Okay. As far as the different um, curriculums mm -hmm. that are in the public school, mm -hmm. is their children set for those mm -hmm. computer software that you're explaining? This one, yes, and then special services, they have additional programming. And also, too, I also have to say that our bilingual population, they have what's called, they don't use iReady. They use what's called Imagine Math. And Think Through Math is the same thing as Imagine Math. They just changed the name. Mm -hmm. So they have Imagine Math, but now they also have Imagine, I believe it's called English or ELA or something like that. Okay, yes. So this program that you have, programmed in the computer, does that count towards the uh, children's curriculum objective? 
up. So they are aligned to the standards. Right. These activities are definitely aligned to standards. They're also aligned to kind of like gauge as far as park is concerned, you know, how, how they would project how they do on park. Um, and in regards to instruction, meaning if I'm a teacher and I'm getting ready to teach, for instance, um, adding two digit plus one digit numbers, for instance, in first grade, okay? And it might not be because if you're all working at different levels, you might not be per se at that skill at this time when I tell you to go to the computer, right? But as a teacher, I can say, well, I'm going to be teaching this because everybody, this is a skill that's in the curriculum that everybody needs to know. And so now I can go in and I can assign that lesson to everybody, regardless of where you are at individually as a student. So, I'm sorry, I have a question. So, almost similar to her. So, if a child is on home instruction or anything like that, would that? Oh yeah, they could probably use that for home instruction. I'm not sure of what the tool that they use, but this could be a, a good tool for home instruction as well. Okay. Good question. Thank you. All right, so that's um, how you get in through Clever. And so now I want to share with you a couple of resources that are important that you may or may not be aware of. But what's nice is um, they're here at your fingertips and they are so easy to um, be able to assess. I've been trying to get the word out in regards to certain things and waiting for a good time, so I'll share with you. The first resource I'd like to share is, um, when I spoke to Ms. Henson, she asked for things that kids could do on the computer, you know, while they're home or whatever the case <laughs> is. But I wanted to share resources that our students in Camden City have access to that you may not be aware of. So when um, Michelle Obama and Barack, of course, were in the, under their administration, they partnered with publishers, okay? And one of the things that they found out is, is that, of course, many of our districts, because of funding or whatever the case is, were lacking libraries, okay, or librarians in buildings, and not be, or libraries just in the community, such as Canada. Okay, and so through an initiative which is called Connect Ed, okay, Connect Ed, one of the things that they did was that they were partnering with these publishers and with the publishers like Baker and Taylor and other, organiz uh, other uh, publishers, all of these publishers came together and they donated these digital books free of charge to any low income districts for students that are like, we're free and reduced lunch. So any student has access to these um, resources. Now I want Michelle to share just briefly with you. Do you remember a book that you loved as a child? A favorite story that ignited your imagination? For so many of us, books opened our minds to a world of possibility. Unfortunately, right now, millions of children in America don't have that chance because they don't have adequate access to the books they need to learn and dream. The new Open eBooks app will help change that because thanks to Open eBooks, thousands of popular and award-winning titles are now available free of charge for young people who need them, whether they're on a military base overseas or in your neighborhood here at home. So if you're a librarian, an educator, or a caregiver working with kids in need, Visit openebooks.net today to learn more about the program and see how you can help bring a love of reading to our young people. Thanks so much. Okay, so I found this information out and I was so excited. But then my, my whole concern was how do I share this out with the district so large? But sometimes communication can be kind of, you know, when you're like sharing it, you want to get it out the right way. And time moved on, and because when Open Apex first started, and when I finally did the research on it, they required these codes. One long code for the username, and then a short code for the password. And I was like, if every child has to get one of these, and I have to distribute it, then who's going to be responsible for what the building? And it could be pretty tedious. So then as time went on, and I researched it and testing it out, or whatever the case is, what excited me the most is, later on when I went back home, I saw that wonderful word called clever. Don't we just talk about clever? Yeah. Yes. What's clever? Right. 
So, accessible because we have Clever. I was like, oh, I logged into Clever as a district administrator. I added the open ebooks app into the dashboard. I gave everybody in the district permission. And then from that point, I had to, you know, I worked a little bit more to try to figure out, you know, like how do they have access? So, it's just as simple. I want to pass these out real quickly. You can take, yeah, help you pass those out, and I'll start over here. This document that we're passing out right now is actually something that um, is in Spanish and English, so on both sides. If you're um, at your buildings when you return, especially our FOCs, I need you to touch base with your ed tech liaisons in your buildings so that they could assist you with training your parents, okay? But with open ebooks, this is how simple it is. So, for open <coughs> ebooks, it's only accessible on a phone or a tablet, unfortunately. Only on phones or tablets, not on laptops, not on computers, okay? And the idea is, I think that Michelle and Barack and the companies, they want to make sure the kids stay connected and continue on in their reading no matter where they're at in their transition, okay? So, if you have it, and you can make a decision now if you want to install this or if you want to wait and install it on a device in which you know your kid's going to have access to, okay? But, if you have a device and you want to follow through with this and you know that your kid's going to be on your phone doing this because that's where they would be reading these books, the only thing that you need, of course, would be your student's ID number, okay, whatever the ID number is, and then, of course, the date of birth. And remember, we said if it's February, it's going to be 2 slash whatever the date is slash and then the four digits for the year, okay? Now, and the kids notice that they're using iReady in the buildings, which they are. So, if you were to go on your phone and go to your store, your app store, and you download Open eBooks, okay? If you go there, you're gonna download Open I've already done this, but you go and download Open eBooks. And then after you download Open eBooks, the next thing that you're gonna do is when the app comes up, it will ask you to, um, you have to log in. Now, you're not gonna log into Open eBooks. You're gonna tell it you want it to log in through Clever, because there's like a little uh, icon at the bottom that asks you uh, if you wanna log in through Clever. And you can see that actually on these um, screenshots here. You select <coughs> Clever, once you select Clever, the next thing it asks you is what school. So you pick the school in the district or whatever, and then from that point, then you're able to put in your student's information, so whatever the ID number is and the date of birth, and it'll automatically take you in. Question, got to listen. Uh, when does the uh, grade level start? Kindergarten, Kindergarten through 12th grade. And I'll be very honest with you, some of those 12th grade titles are things that you might enjoy reading. Okay. It's okay, but I'm just saying, and I'm gonna, um, I can pay, well, I'll share with you, this is what it kind of like looks like to a certain degree, and there's titles there, and then they're, in, they're separated by grade level and by different genres. So it might be, you know, fiction, historical fiction, um, everything that's there, and then from that <coughs> point, you select, you can, you can, um, you can actually take out or check out I believe it's up to five books for seven weeks. And it keeps time. And you can also adjust the, uh, how should I say this, the, um, the settings as far as visual is concerned, you know, if you want the light background, dark background, and so forth. And then um, you can also enlarge the text for students that might need to enlarge it, okay? Very exciting, especially in the classroom, if you have like access to iPads or iPods um, or something like that, then you can use it in the classroom, but more importantly, at home for kids, you know, if you want them to be able to continue on with their independent reading, okay? All right, so please share that. Very exciting as far as I'm concerned. I really um, enjoyed it. And all of the, um, you, they, you know, they turn and all of the pages are not like normally when you find classics online and it's just the plain black and white. There's photos there, there's images that just, just like if you were looking at it on a computer. Okay? All right, questions? Good? Yes. Okay, I'm a parent. 
Okay. I do reside here in Camden, and I have children that attend public schools at Camden as well as almost like a Renaissance school, Mass Rehab. Sure. Okay. Yeah, does Mass Rehab access to this? Can they link? Can my students, that two students that attend Mass Rehab, can my student, my children, but their student ID link into this? If there are students that are registered in Camden City School District through our system, mm -hmm. if they're registered to Camden City School District, yes. then they can. Okay. But if they're not, I don't think that they cannot unless Mastery sets it up. Okay? Which they should be able to yes. set it up. Right. Yeah, because it, it's for any any cities or low income or whatever. And so Baltimore and all those other districts, they're you know, they're using it, they've introduced it, so yeah. Okay. And I, and I do have a grandchild that has an IEP. An IEP? I can't even get it up. It's an okay. IEP plan. Okay. So can she ha access this? Yes. With her student Is she IEP? a student in the district? Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. So she can actually go in here and take out five books. And the only students that probably cannot right now would be our pre-K population. Okay, because they don't have books there for them. When we set it up, it was only for K through 12th grade. But every other student should have access to it. Okay. Okay. And teachers. Yes. <laughs> All right, and um, okay. So I want to move on to another resource. And you know, last year we introduced a new curriculum, and one of the things that was there was a lot of um, anxiety about Great Mind, or I should say uh, Eureka Math, because it was new. Um, it was a different way, definitely, of teaching mathematics. I had a chance to attend a um, conference over the summertime, so I'd be able to connect to see what it's like and how technology could be used. And I would say it's different, you know. And a lot of times, you know, when kids bring home homework, and even my son, and he's, you know, he's in 11th grade. But um, you know, sometimes I'll look, and I'll have to just go back and try to research on my own. And the way, that, of course, you all know. Uh, you may have learned it. It's definitely not the way that's being taught now. You're like, how did they come up with that? But it makes sense after you sit down and look at it. But so Eureka Math uh, is under the parent company called Great Minds. And so Great Minds has a homework helper. And with the homework helper, it's there for to assist parents with um, homework when they come home. Simple, to the point, not really hard um, you know, to utilize. It was rolled out last year. Uh, a lot of parents did take advantage of it. We wanted to make sure that you were aware that it is there. So if kids come home with their homework, you're able to uh, assist. Look it up to see how you can assist you know, with it, especially when they get past sixth grade, middle school. The math really gets interesting. So, the handout that I'm giving you right now, unfortunately, is not in Spanish. But on here, it kind of like gives you a step-by-step -step on how you want to set it up. I do need a volunteer that wouldn't mind setting up one now, if you don't mind, if you know, if you have your email addresses to go through the process. Anybody? All right, what's your name? Talera. Talera? Okay. All right, so we're going to get you to... We're actually at Great Minds now, okay? And you can see it there. Okay. So, Talira, uh, based on the directions, it asks you to go to greatminds.org slash store slash sign up. So we're going to do that. So back behind the uh, URL up here. She's going to put store, type in store behind that. Slash sign up. Okay, now from here, you then have to set up your account. So Talia, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to set up your account. I'm sorry for the way it's projected. But basically, she's putting in her name, email address. And as Talira is typing um, that up, and thank you for volunteering, 
I want to point out that on your page, you have something that's called a product code. Okay. Now, the product code <coughs> is unique to Camden City School District. Okay? So this is for Camden City School District, and you have access to be able to use this. So you, uh, for FOCs, do not post this on a web page because it's only for Camden City School District. So you can hand it out. We have plenty of handouts, and I can actually send you this if you want to pass it forward digitally, but it's not to be posted on a website. All right, now from this point is asking her, she is a, if she's a robot, she'll go through trying to find all the vehicles, because it's going to tell you to click every little, little square where you see a vehicle that's involved. Probably, yeah, those two at the bottom, too. Mm -hmm. And that one's good, yep. Yes! All right, she passed the first part. <laughs> I know, right? Got it? Uh -oh. There you go. He's worked in buying those uh, tickets on Ticketmaster, right? Okay. All right, so now she's creating her account. And so it gives you the terms of service and the agreement. And then she'll click on the little check box that just says, I accept the terms. And what's interesting is it won't let you click this until you go over here and scroll all the way down as if you read it. <laughs> and then after she scrolls all the way down, it'll change where she will be able to now click. Interesting, right? All right, now from this point, it'll give you a tour, but we're going to skip the tour if you don't mind. And we'll just close out, yeah. But it'll give you a tour of the site. And then from here, this is where now you have to get the content for your students. So if your child is in first grade or whatever grade level, if you have kids in multiple grades, you can also get the content. So the next step, I think, is that step three, where it says something about a product code? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So now she has to put in a product key. So if you were to click on that button that says product key, this is where now you would have to type in this information. So, Mr. Barth, would you mind reading it out to her so she can type it in? Um, All caps, right? Resource. Is, is this 80? Yep, oh, you got it? Okay. okay Woo, she's good. <laughs> Those are five zeros after that. Uh. So, the product key, like I said, is unique for the district. All right, so now she's here. She can select whichever grade her child is in to be able to decide on, you know, what homework help she needs. You have a little person? Yeah, I got to give her a Okay. Oh, boy. There you go. Oh, there it is. I'm going to have to select. It might, it might have not to come in the last. I mean, the other thing might be blocked. Yep, so go to your dashboard now. So now she's uh, got the content of the homework help for kindergarten. And so if you look right here, it populates down here. Now say for instance, if she had a child in kindergarten, maybe second grade, she could go back to the key, put the code in again, and it, the code will come right up because you already put it in there and populate, and then you can select another grade. So if you had multiple students at different grade levels, okay? Now, could, do you mind right now, could you click on the K? Let's see what, what's in there. And so when kids come in, most of the time at the bottom of their homework, it will share with you. I might have to scroll down a bit. It will share with you, um, yep, you want to agree. There's that. It won't allow you until you scroll down on the, um, right. There you go. Okay. And so it will come up now. Once it comes up, most of the homework is actually set up into lessons. lessons and like modules. And so at the bottom of the homework, it'll say like module, whatever, lesson, whatever, whatever the topic is. And then from that point, that's where you can find the help. So if you don't mind, you can click on anything on the left over there so that we can at least see. So that one is, tell us the title of that one. Hello. Count the dots right now, and draw the same number of dots from the whiteboard up and down instead of curls. 
Right. So it kind of like spells out how the kids would see it, and it has these thought bubbles there where you as a parent can read in, you know, in between to figure out exactly what it's asking of the students. Okay. <coughs> Kindergarten is very simplistic. It's when you get to those the sixth, I'm telling you, like the middle school or whatever, where you're like, you know, what is going on? And then as you scroll down, do you mind scrolling down a little? Okay, and as you scroll down, there's more information here. Okay. So please share this, take it, you know, back um, at your parent meetings or whatever, and let's give her a hand. So, so yes. Ms. Wilson, um, on that, um, uh, this program, so if a parent um, goes on to the Genesis, Genesis portal, that um, they should be able to see this homework. This, I guess the teachers are using this as far as homework assignments and things of that nature. The parents can go on to see um, some of the other programs also are being um, uh, an assignment for that particular day. Okay. So Mr. Barfield is sharing, um, for many of you who may or may not know, we have Genesis, which is the student information system that's set up and through the student information system besides students information and demographics and so forth and grades or whatever the case is, they also have a grade book. And within the grade book, teachers can assign, place their assignments in there. And so what Mr. Barfield is saying is as a parent, there's a part where I can go on and I can see and I can say, hey, this is an assignment, depending on how the actual teacher puts it into the grade book. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure of how each person sets it up, mm -hmm. but if they put it in there as kindergarten, grade, whatever, lesson, whatever, mm -hmm. and if a parent, I'm a parent, and I might say, oh, wow, well, uh, my child didn't do too well on his homework assignment, maybe they need a little bit more reinforcement. Now, I can go and use this right here as a way of assisting the child with, you know, supplementing and reinforcing whatever the skill is. Yeah. Now, as far as Genesis is concerned, does anybody in here not have a Genesis account as a parent? Just raise your hand if you cannot get into Genesis. Okay. So, from my understanding, and Ms. Henson can um, share with you a little bit more, but you can go through your FOC. Okay. Touch base with your FOC. They can get you a login, and you can, uh, through Genesis, I think, take a look at grades. You can actually have access to current and former report cards, and I think attendance is in there as well. Okay, so it's really a good resource to be able to use to keep gauge your kids, and also too, as we think about using the technology, making sure that your kids are aware of what their grades are and what's going on, you know? So having them get into that practice too. My son, well, he keeps me right on target as far as it's concerned. If I don't know, he'll definitely let me know. Well, he, he monitors that, so yeah. All right, good question, Mr. Barthel, thank you. All right, so that's Eureka Math, okay? Please share this, we have plenty of extras up here, okay? The last resource I want to share with you, because we are a district, um, once again, that uh, we have a license through Microsoft. And so we have, with Microsoft, when we pay, our teachers, they use, you know, Word, Office, I mean, a PowerPoint, Excel, and so forth. But Microsoft also extended to us, because we have that license, access to Office 365. Okay? Now, Office 365 is just like, well, I should say just like, it's similar to Google, okay? The difference is, of course, you're actually dealing more or less with the actual um, documents and applications that are created through Microsoft because this is Office 365 um, uh, made, you know, under Microsoft, whereas Google, they're kind of like generic documents. You're doing the same exact thing, and what it basically is is, um, for many of you who may not know, most of us may be used to, I should say most of us, I can't even say that now, but in the past, we went and we bought a computer, and on the computer they had an application on there, like Office, and we saved everything that was either on your computer, or on a flash drive, or on a disk, or something, right? Now things have changed, and they have something that's called cloud-based computing. So now, Everything is in the cloud. So you can be anywhere in the world, and as long as you have internet access, you can retrieve your documents if you are in and your documents or whatever's in the cloud. And in the cloud, you can save documents, you can save slideshows, you can save pictures, the sky's the limit. 
you decide on how far you trust that is there before you decide you want to back something up, okay? And I do encourage people to back certain things up, especially those important documents, okay? Because anything can go down, we already know that. <laughs> With nuclear bombs. <laughs> but anyway, I say that to say that we all, all of our teachers, or I should say all of our staff, as well as students, have an account with Office 365, okay? Now, how does that work? So, if I were to go out online to if you were to type in online Office 365 or if you were to type in Microsoft.com or if you were to type in Microsoft online any Microsoft page and I say this because it doesn't make a difference really where you're at as long as you're on a Microsoft page. So Microsoft Office 365, which is Microsoft. Here I have off www.office.com, okay? And I'm at office.com right now, and in the upper right-hand corner of any of those pages, any of those pages, there's a sign-in, okay? Now, for our students, the sign-ins for definitely K through eighth grade would be their ID number, and CCSD. ID number, CCSD. At the high schools, and it may vary, it may change because high schoolers are a little bit more savvy, and so it may have changed, which it probably has not. They may be under the same CCSD, and I can double check to, to definitely let you know, okay? But the ID number, and then the password is CCSD. For staff, <laughs> for staff, FOCs, any staff member, your username is going to be your complete email address. So Tanya Wilson at Camden.k12.nj.us. That would be my username, and the password would be whatever your password is for your email. Okay? So whatever your password is for your email, that is the same login for this. Okay, so I'm sharing this with you because um, I've already logged in. So what what I'm going to show you, I've already passed that process, okay? All right, so when I go to log in, or sign in, I should say, because and when you all decide if you were to add an account, I'm not going to add an account. This is the reason why for people who are in the district. If you're logged into a computer in the district, then you have to log on literally with your log on information. So no matter how many times if I'm logged on to this computer, if you were Ms. Henson to come up, or Mr. Seawright, if you were to come up and try to log into your account, it kind of like, um, it, it, it overrides, my login to the computer overrides anything else. So the best thing to do is make sure you log on to the computer and log on to yourself, if that makes sense. All right, so once you go in and you were to begin to type in whatever your, um, login is. So for students, if I was a student and my um, ID was 12345, I would type in 12345 at canon.k12.nj.us with the username, okay? Password, CCSD, okay? Now, once I go in, as soon as I type in the at Camden, you're going to notice that it's going to automatically change, like you clicked on something and you didn't click on anything wrong. The, uh, the, the, the issue is it's automatically recognizing the at Camden and it's connecting your user with the school's domain, if that makes sense, okay? But anyway, once you log in with that information, and notice this is taking you to an organization. Now here, it looks like it wants me to authenticate, so let me see if I can try this here. You shouldn't have this problem once you do it one time on your computer. So once you log in, it kind of looks like this, okay? And so in here, just like Google, you have a drive, which is called OneDrive in Office. You also have SharePoint, which we use to a certain degree in the district. You have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, which is used at the high schools, okay? And there's some other uh, app applications too. It all depends on the user what they have access to. They also have something that's called forms. So if they wanted to create surveys, 
questionnaires or quizzes as teachers, you're able to do that. If you want to question or collect information about um, parents' emergency information or parents' information, you can create a form and your ed tech liaisons in your building can give training on that. Once again, I say your ed tech liaisons in your building can give training on that. Touch base with them. They've already been trained. Okay. So within here, you have a drive. Just like you have a hard drive for some people who use H drive, this is the drive that's out there. You have access to The students have access to it. You, you can save certain things on here. Um, and then you can upload information. Question? Oh, no. Okay. All right. Now, the best thing about this, and I, I can't, I'm not going to go too far into detail. I can always come back and delve a little bit more. But because you have this one account, or your child has this one account, a lot of times we go out and we purchase computers during the holiday. And when we purchase computers, you know, they sell them at the bare minimum. You just bought the computer. You didn't buy any software. So now if you want to add software, you know, you went in the store and the computer was $700. And before you leave out, you're probably going to pay $1,000 if you want everything on air to be ready to go. If you have a child that's going away to college, you know, that can be expensive too. But with this account, if you notice on the upper right hand corner, it says install apps. So you are able, because you have this account, to install Microsoft Office 2016 <coughs> on up to five computers, meaning laptops or desktops. And you can also install on up to five mobile devices, meaning tablets or phones. So that's 10 devices, five and five. Please, when you open up your email, the attachment that Ms. Mary sent out will be attached to the email once again. Mr. Adams will be sending out the attachment to the email that she just sent out. Please open it. Thank you. So if and I- Also on the board in the main office if you would like to see. Thank you very much. <laughs> so if I were to go to install apps and click one time, it gives me two options. And it says Office 2016, it'll include, it tells you what it includes. Now, let's think about this for a minute. So when you install this 2016 on a computer, that means that that software is now on a computer. Even if I had the older version and I decide it's older version, I want to update it. You can update to 2016 on that computer. If you had, and because you have so many, it does not have to, of course, be a district. Of course, you can do it on a district computer. But you can install it on any computer. You would just go to, say, for instance, uh, my son. You know, he's getting ready to go away to college. I just bought a new computer. And I go, log on. This is a computer that I purchased. Mm -hmm. I own it. Mm -hmm. Log on. So Office 365, just like we did. Right? I go right in, click on install, it goes through the process, it installs, you log out, and then when any time that we were to go back onto the computer, then you would be able to find that software actually installed on the computer. Okay? Plus, you still have the Office 365 if you didn't want to use the install. Okay? So that's two different things going on. Question? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I missed it or not, but you did say something about uh on other networks, you can you can access this program, and it'll it'll take you to the school system's link. Or what was that? Oh, so in our district, and for parents, it might not mean as much, but for any staff members that are in here. So in our district, when we go to a computer, we log one, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, you're probably on your computer is R C right, right? right. Now, if you are then, if you set up your account, the Office 365 account, you go on, you're on. Now, I decide, hey, I want to check my Office 365, right. but I'm going to use Mr. Seawright's computer while he's literally logged on to the computer. It's not going to work. If the way it's set up, it will automatically, even if I log in with my credentials, it's still going to go back to your account. Okay, so in order for me to actually log on to your computer, you have to log off of the computer. I log back onto your computer as myself and then go into my office. Okay, mm -hmm. outside the district, it works the normal way. Whatever you do outside the district, because you're on a different network, it'll work fine. It is still connected. Oh. Yes, it'll, it'll work outside the district. Yeah, it's just in the district the way it's set up. Okay, okay? I just want to make you aware because you'll be like, what's going on? It'll get really weird. Yeah. All right, any other questions? 
And you're probably wondering, like, what's the benefit of this? So this is the benefit. I have here yeah, have a drive. Mm -hmm. I mean, say it. What would you say? So I have here files. I have like a slew of files that are here. So if I don't have my computer, and if I'm stuck in the airport, and my neighbor is sitting there, and I have to access something like right away, can I use your computer for a second? Some people will let you do that. You can go in, you can access it. If I'm at, you know, in Egypt, <laughs> and you know, I want to access files, I can do that. And what's also nice is for videos, anybody who uses videos is the other nice tip. You, you know, sometimes with videos, you are not able to send a video because of the size of the video. You drop it into a drive, you get a hyperlink, and you just send a hyperlink, and they have access to the video. So those are things that can be shared through your tech liaisons that can be done. So. All right, any questions? Okay. Oh, and be, before you go, before you, I just want to share. So, Office 365 was introduced last year to our high school science uh, classes, and they also received tablets, and it was a way of going paperless, and at that time, they also used OneNote as well as Class Notebook, okay? where there was actually an entire notebook that's set up that's digital with sections and where there's homework and everything all in one location. So every child had their own digital notebook with sections and pages and teachers could drop certain things in, they could make comments and so forth. And it was a really exciting time for me because two years before that, I went out, I went to a conference, I looked at it and I was like, how can we use this? And it's also a good way of becoming paperless, whatever. So it was very exciting to see that using the tablets in the science classroom. Now we have a, a several administrators that are using it, you know, um, and it's exciting to know that you can take a notebook that you normally would have to, you know, make copies of and section it off and organize it and everything and actually make this all digital in one spot. So that's another thing. So if you ever, if you want to learn a new um, application in Microsoft, check out OneNote for personal use too. It's great. OneNote. I'm sorry. Mr. Um, a couple questions. Um, one is um, a reference to part of the, um, I guess, curriculum and instruction. Is part of technology um, um, computer um, teachers are they? Is, is keyboarding part of um, the lessons being taught? Because we know that when it comes to testing, one of the um, things that our students are testing on is basically finishing off a sentence of responding and you know in, in question form. So is that something that's keyboarding? Is that something that's you know, being incorporated through our technology? So with the, uh, I'm glad you asked that question. So in our computer labs, they normally, when they start their, how should I say, their do nows or their beginning activity or whatever they're going to do when they're entering the um, classrooms, all of the teachers use uh, keyboarding skills. So we have a system called learning.com, which is uh, in which they teach adaptive keyboarding. And so they use that and or sometimes they may not use learning.com, but they'll use other resources that are online to do that. Okay. So that's one way of being able to teach keyboarding. Um, but as parents, I strongly I would strongly encourage you because it can be taught in a computer lab, but that might be one day mm -hmm. out of a week for maybe 10 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. But the best way for kids to really get engaged is to begin to give them um, activities in, in Word where they have to type. <coughs> so they might have to respond to a question. And it doesn't have to be something that your teacher assigns. It could be something as a parent you assign. You give them a question or maybe um, an essay question and have them begin to respond and get them in the practice of typing and uh, you know, building up uh, their skills. Because on our, uh, our standardized tests like PARC or whatever, a lot of times they have just simplistic, well I should say simplistic questions, but open-ended questions which may require to a certain extent uh, a, a short response, which might be a paragraph, and or it could be essay. And a lot of times our kids, you know, 
they will go through the road of being able to do the keyboarding as far as the pace is concerned or accuracy, but the bottom line is they really need, do need to know how do you formulate an essay in word processing? How do you go from right to left? How do you go, you know, you're returning and capitalizing and punctuation and all that good stuff. So them getting into the practice maybe daily, like once a week, doing something like that. It doesn't have to be anything excruciating where they're like dreading it, but give them maybe a topic that they enjoy. You know, if they're into, I'll say, wrestling or into football or whatever the case is, or something that's of interest to them, so that then they, they'll have their own kind of like electronic um, journal on the computer, you know, at home or even on your phone. And that have to be an actual application. It could be notes, you know, on your on your phone. Because they're good with texting a lot of them. You know, so they can text and that's our shorthand and they can definitely type, you know, and learn they're, they're learning how to do that. You know, I think that's where they don't get enough practice at, but that's definitely a good question. So yes, they do do it. Another follow up too is in reference to in the past we had distant learning system, you know, set up throughout the district. <laughs> which gave our students a lot of exposure outside throughout the, you know, the states, the United States, and the world. Yes. Can you talk about, are, are we still using that uh, distant learning to give our children that exposure? Um, and how is it being used? And I mean, usually in the past, they've had a schedule where they had things lined up where they would know yes. that this is what we want to have these children engaged in. So in the past, as Mr. Barfield pointed out, we had what's called a formal system. Formal meeting, distance learning, two screens that were set up where there were times where kids had got a chance to um, meet the author, engage with the aquarium, talk to experts, um, talk to authors of books, ask questions. I remember one year in a fourth grade classroom, I haven't had a chance to have my kids come in quite early, like 7.30 in the morning, and we did a trip around the world where we met kids in different countries, like four or five different countries, mm -hmm. and we got a chance to see what does it what does a child, what the life of a child looks like in fourth grade in um, China, or in Africa, or in another country? And it was just very interesting to see that. Um, since that time with the changes, and I think to the changes with our um, technology, and the department as a whole, and kind of revamping and restructuring, we've lost that. Okay, the systems, um, I know the traditional systems don't work anymore. Uh, one of the things that we've been trying to explore I haven't gotten to that point in two with the change with um, our new um, mind shift is being able to explore even um, like Skype. Skyping in education, which there's a lot out there right now. So uh, a quick answer would be, well, uh, the, the most direct answer would be at this point, I would say not as a district we have not. Uh, we do have some pockets of it. Some teachers may use Skype if they can get through, through our network. And also, too, um, Google Hangouts is another um, tool that some of them may or may not be able to use. Um, definitely excited about getting that back in, you know, and connecting that to the mm -hmm. curriculum. So you said basically we need to update the equipment, first of all, I think that we have access, or even what you're saying, is, is does mindset have the, 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 I guess it's more or less like the capability or not a space to actually set it up in the system because the way it seemed like the way we had it set up before when you had them in a different school like that one day when we did a district wide and we had matter of fact we brought in um, the gentleman for communication from the Department of Education Ron Hanifer and we actually had them set up to talk to different students at the same time in different schools mm -hmm. and that was based through our technology department be able to set them feeders up yes. and have that kind of that coordination <coughs> Yeah. So it's more or less this mindset actually have that capability to actually set that up. Yes, mind shift and mind then shift. um it's okay. And then also too making sure that um we have conversations about filters and being able to actually open things up so that we can make it happen as far as getting access just to be able to use the tool itself. So yeah. It's been, you know, it's uh definitely something that we have been in conversation about. Thank you. All right, well, I do thank you. I just want to go back and review what we talked about today. Had a chance to share with you um, some updates as far as the district is concerned with the instructional tech. Um, had a chance to share with you some resources that we're using on a daily basis. I do have a question. What are we using for ELA and math in the classroom setting for rotations uh, for kids to be able to be assessed at their level? I can't hear you. I, I read. 
I read it. I read it. Oh, you had some yes. Yes. Right. And for, oh, yes. I always do that. And for our and for our middle school. We have another answer. Oh, you got another answer? Because, yeah, because for bilingual, it's um, imagine. Right? Yes. Imagine. Imagine, imagine math, math and imagine yeah. reading, I believe it's called. Imagine math and imagine reading. Thank you. Very good. All right. How about for the middle school math? Middle school math. Think through right. math. Think through math. All right. Good. Um, which resource is a resource in which your kids, if they don't have access or they don't have books at home, they can actually access or use this resource um, at home? Ebooks. E open ebooks. Open ebooks. E How? What device can I use open ebooks on? Clever. I can I can access it through Clever, but what device can I install? Oh, so, 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 so. All right. Good. 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 Um, which one of these resources could you use in the play uh, to replace or the same uh, the, the, similar to Google Docs? Office 365. Why do you have access to that? Microsoft. Yes. Who has access to that, Dad? The district. The district. The district. The Thank you very much. And my last question would be, I'm having a problem with this middle school math. What can I use? Eureka. How do I get in? To Eureka? So Eureka? No, 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 Eureka, we have the product code key here. Very good, the product code. Yeah. Yeah. Product All right. Code. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for um, inviting me. Thank you so much. Again, thank you, Ms. Wilson. Um, again, um, parents, um, one of the things that we know, um, sometimes we have our children always come home and tell them, we ain't got no homework, we don't have no homework. So now we understand that we have resources that parents can actually utilize at home to help reinforce, even if your child say they don't have homework, you can actually go on the Genesis portal and actually see, um, utilize that to see if um, teachers are using, um, having homework on, online, and then actually just reinforcing with some um, tools at home to help reinforce um, your children's um, academic um, progress. So again, um, we'd like to thank Ms. Wilson, Technology Department for coming in and doing that wonderful presentation. Um, I don't know if Ms. Henson has any um, announcements that you want to make. Okay, well, we know we February 8th, we're having our um, Black History Program. We're going to have it at Lanique's Bookstore. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. It's downtown. But they have an um, extensive collection of history um, in there. He has an um, auditorium um, that uh, we're going to do a presentation. We're gonna, matter of fact, I'm supposed to be going there to set up to actually go um, through the agenda to, today. So we'll have a, definitely a nice presentation. Um, we have our next um, training for our, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Title I um, leadership training on um, January 31st. And that will be at Woodrow Wilson High School. So we hope to see everyone come out. And again, we'd like to thank um, Wiggins for hosting this meeting. And we'd like to thank um, Vanguard for coming and taping this because the most important thing we know is sometimes parents can't be here. So hopefully parents will get to see this in the community and then they can use these wonderful resources that the district has for us, our children and the parents. So again, Hope to see you guys next month, and um, have a um, good day. Thank you.